Hey everybody, Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com, back to do another breakdown of training camp battles for the Pittsburgh Steelers 2020 preseason, talking about the number four running back spot today between Jalen Samuels and Kareth White Jr. And honestly, it's rare we even talk about a number four battle, potential battle for, for running back, because this team over the last you know decade or so has usually kept just three running backs plus a fullback. They'll have a fullback this year, of course, Derek Watt, but they are probably more likely than not to carry four running backs, which is pretty unusual for them. Of course, you'll have James Conner, Benny Snell, fourth round pick, Anthony McFarland, and then one of, I believe, Samuels or Kareth White Jr. So that's where the battle, I think, is at today. Starting with Jalen Samuels, I guess he has the uh, the veteran edge right now over Kareth White, the guy they know a little bit more, and he's a guy that uh, they like for versatility. Now, I view him as kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type player, and even then, I think he struggles in some of the, the perceptions of, of where he succeeds, but he is a guy that can, you know, in theory, at least be a, a, a decent receiver, someone that can move around the formation, play in the slot, play out wide, very comfortable with that. That's what he did primarily at NC State. He actually had more reception in college than he had carries. He can be a, a decent runner. Um, you saw that in the Patriots game in 2018, his rookie year, where that was kind of his breakout moment. Um, he's someone that can help you on special teams, whether you're talking pump block team, kick return team. So he can kind of put his hand in a lot of different pots. It's just the question is, you know, what does he do incredibly well? And I know last year with the context of the offense, you can't put everything on Jalen Samuels, but I don't think you can absolve him from, from everything either. And just as a receiver, he had a lot of drops and he had six drops last year. That was tied fifth most for any running back in football on not a large amount of targets. He didn't get targeted a hundred times, like 50 or so targets last year. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but still not an incredibly high number, not a top three number in football. And what he does after the catches, I think, been pretty poor. I think of of backs with 50 or 60 receptions over the last two years, he ranks like 25th or 31 in yards per reception. Um, so is he super elusive or powerful or speed? Like, what is that defining trait for Jalen Samuels? And I still struggle with that. His pass pro has improved a little bit since coming out of college, where he basically did none of that at, at NC State uh, because he was used so much as a receiver uh, and played like it. But it just it, it really hasn't been a whole lot better either. So the question is just, what does Jalen Samuels do super well for you? Probably really nothing. In theory, again, it's more of a receiver aspect of it, which he does have an advantage over Kareth White in that regard, at least. But how great is that advantage? Uh, I, I still struggle with that. But there is enough of a, a value in kind of doing a little bit of everything, which is going to help him as you kind of round out the depth chart and say if you just get a guy and kind of come in as in all situations type player to do whatever that moment might call for. And plus, he is experienced. And, and there were a couple of moments where um, he has obviously produced positive plays. So there's more of a resume there. And they liked him coming out of college because he had a good resume of productivity. And that's really important to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he fits that overall big back mold this team has generally gravitated towards for, for quite some time. Then you have Kareth White, who I guess I would characterize as the challenger in this regard. Of course, was picked up midway through last year when this team was ravaged by injuries to the backfield, including Samuels getting hurt for, for a time as well. Coming over from the Bears... Yeah, coming over from the Bears and making an impact right away. He was somebody that was kind of a breath of fresh air in the Steelers' backfield that is traditionally, again, as reference with Samuels, bigger backs, not necessarily explosive backs. You know, James Conner, Benny Snell, Jalen Samuels, and the like. And go back to other guys like Mendon Hall and Jonathan Dwyer and, and, and even Le'Veon Bell, obviously a big back, they're, they're much more talented. But um, White was a different type where he was a smaller, shiftier speed back. But I liked his vision, his elusiveness, ability to get square, get vertical, get downhill, and he averaged over five yards per carry in, in relatively limited action on I think 25 carries or so plus gave a little shot in the arm in the kick return game which was a low bar <laughs> to, to begin with but I think he had one or two decent returns one I think around 40 yards which for Pittsburgh is basically a touchdown these days so I thought it was just a different dynamic type of back that was interesting brought some big playability and the threat of, of that uh, to, to the Steelers offense which they desperately needed for a run game and an offense that was just lacking those kind of big plays so that was interesting for White there are limitations with him as, as a receiver he has not done much but I think he's capable uh, as a blocker he's going to offer uh, very little and obviously the the big uh negative against Kareth White Jr. is the fact that this team drafted Anthony McFarlane in the fourth round who's got very similar traits and better traits uh than Kareth White they are similar backs in in, in in some sense McFarlane is a little bigger I think a little more powerful and of course that's the luxury of being the fourth round pick where he's very likely to make the roster it would either take obviously an injury or some just disastrous whatever you want to call this preseason this doesn't 
seem like there's going to be a preseason at this point, but uh, you can count on one hand the number of fourth round picks under Kevin Colbert that have not made a team coming out of camp. Like Fred Gibson, I think Duran Grant got to put on the practice squad. Maybe one or two other names. Cameron Stevenson, I don't think was a fourth round pick, but anyway, you get the idea. McFarlane almost guaranteed to be a part of the 53 man roster. And so, do you need a care with White when you have an Anthony McFarlane who's going to do all those things, kick returner, big playability, you know, short pass game, RPO type stuff? Uh, probably not in that sense. So, those are going to be made. You know, I saw some one uh, reader on Steelers Depot make a good point of, you know, you can kind of have Connor and Snell in one bucket as your bigger backs, and McFarlane and White in one bucket as your smaller shift your speed backs and you kind of so if one guy goes down your offense doesn't change a whole lot schematically and the intention and the goal of the offense because you have a back with a similar skill set right behind his next man i'm not opposed to that idea though i do think jalen samuels has the the inside track right now i think he's inside looking out just because they know him a little bit more he is more versatile and i think that's probably going to be where the priorities are when it comes down to who's going to be your number four running back who isn't going to play a ton there'll be a rotation there of course james connor's health is always a concern and that could certainly open the door the way it did last year for guys like Benny Snell and Samuels and of course Gareth White to to log a lot of playing time and see more action the team uh, anticipated or intended but I think just that overall well-rounded-ish skill set for Samuels probably gives him the edge right now but uh, if there's an injury to, to someone then that could open the door for all those guys to make it and there isn't even it's not even 100 percent that they will keep four running backs you could theoretically you know believe that Samuels and White would have both miss uh you know the 53-man roster and could there be a scenario where Samuels could get dealt for like a seventh round pick of some sort. I mean, I suppose if this team could deal off uh, Gerald Hawkins last year to the, to the Buccaneers and Samuels might have some sort of value, although tackles and are harder to find than running backs, for example. But um, I, I guess that's possible too. But I think it's, as we sit here today, and there's so much uncertainty with everything going on in, 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 in the sports world and how it relates to, to the pandemic. But I think Jalen Samuels will be your number four running back. I think Kareth White, would still have practice squad eligibility, so you could just shut them the practice squad. I mean, that that's possible. Um, and, but I think Samuels is going to be your number four behind you know, Snell, McFarland, and Connor, all with some sort of role in rotation. Connor's going to be the guy. He's the feature back that Tomlin likes. But um, I think to, 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 to open the season week one, my belief right now is Jalen Samuels will get the nod over Kareth White. If, if I was... Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin, I had my choice. I'd probably go Kareth White, but of course you want to see how these guys do and whatever semblance of summer action uh, they're able to get. So that is uh, the battle between Jalen Samuels and Kareth White should be an interesting one. Two different skill sets, two guys with uh, cases to be made for and against. And had the team not drafted McFarland, I think I would have leaned a lot uh, more heavily towards towards Kareth White to give you that different component, different type of back. But I think McFarland really hindered White's chances of making the roster. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the number four running back battle between Jalen Samuels and Kareth White and how you think that one could shake up. We'll have some more camp battles coming to you guys in future videos. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.